The last thing we can take a look at doing is putting out one or two extra maps to try and control our emission. Our emission is going to be quite important on the Unity side, so that would be worthwhile doing before we leave Houdini. Uh, I want to avoid rendering, I want to avoid the time overhead and the setup overhead, so I'm going to use some materials that will show up in the viewport here. We can flipbook render them out along with our animation alpha. To do this I intend to use matte caps, which is just a certain type of cheap shading that works quite nicely in the viewport. To get access to matte caps you are going to need to have side effects labs installed. You are going to need to go to your shelves here, click the little plus and load up the side effects labs shelf and then you'll need to hit this button here and download the labs tools. Okay, one of the labs tools that we will be using will be the labs quick material. I will hook this up in a separate branch over here and by default it's set up to use a principles shader uh, which is the Disney principal shader. Uh, I'm going to set it to use labs matte cap and I need to go and find a matte cap material. So I have downloaded some matte caps that I found online and I've placed them into my project hierarchy so if I click the little button here and I can go to dollar hip and I put them in my text folder for textures and here are the Mac apps that I downloaded. Now they're coming up as a sequence and that's because they're numbered. So I'm going to turn off show sequences as one entry. And I'm just going to pick Mac app number one here. And you can see that it gets picked up in my viewport. I'm going to hit D in the, in the viewport here and I'm going to change it to a dark background. And I'm going to jump back into my camera here. So I can now change these numbers here by just middle mousing. And because they're all numbered in a sequence... Uh, Houdini will just pick up the next one so I can start to scroll through them. Um, I'm looking to try and create maps that have different values in them um, so I'll just take a second to go through them and I'll come back to you in one second. So this is the first one that I've selected and this one I think I will try and use in a mission and really it just has a lot of greyish values and some whites and uh, some darker values in here as well so we should be able to get some use out of that one. So I'm going to write this one out uh, as well. I'm going to put this down as a null here and we'll just call this out emission. I'm going to put it into the green channel. Uh, I'm going to copy these two nodes. So I'll just hold the alt key and I'll drag them across. And I need to find another value that I'll put into the blue channel. Okay, and I've picked my last material here and I've gone with this one and it just has a bit of a lightning style feel. So when we're generating our texture atlas, we can pack these different values into the various channels that we can bring back over to Unity and we can hook them up in interesting ways in a shader on the Unity side. So I have some value, as you can see, we have some values for our alpha for our animation clipping. We have some values to try and control the emission. We have some extra values in here. I'm not sure what we'll get out of these ones just yet. And if I have my white clean alpha, in other words, the one without the fade, in case I need it for cutting out. So we'll just put this one down here as well. And we'll call this one just out alpha. So out alpha. And I'll probably put, I'll put this into the red channel. Uh, now, of course, at this stage, what you would do is go back and adjust some of your settings up here to get the look that you would want. Um, I've gone and just added a subdivide node after the polywire just to soften out some of the edges a little bit. And I also added this delete node, and that's because I felt some of the lightning strikes were a little bit busy. So I just put an expression into the delete node here to delete any primitive numbers that are over the number eight. So and that just gets rid of any uh, extra branches on some of the lightning strikes. These are all the textures that I need to output. Uh, I could be very clever and I could set up something over in the rendering context of Houdini to render one after the other, but I'm gonna be a bit more manual and old school about it. Uh, I'm going to render them out one at a time through the flipbook. So I've adjusted my camera and I've checked my timeline and I seem to be okay for now. Uh, so I'm gonna render them out in a very manual way. So I'm gonna do the out alpha first. So uh, this is my, my clean alpha. So I'm going to say flipbook with new settings. I'm gonna render it at 16 frames. And again, I'm just gonna make sure that the AA settings are as high as they can be. And it's 1024 by 1024. And then I'm gonna click start here. And it's going to go off and render those to end play. And then I will save that sequence out. And then I will do that for each of the nodes here. And then I'm gonna pack all those sequences together. So this is my first sequence here. 
I'm going to right click and say save sequence and I'm going to go into my render folder here and just to keep things tidy I'm going to make a new folder and we'll call it uh, lightning packed and we can place them all in here so this is and it is important to kind of have some consistent naming here so this is my red channel so I'm going to call it alpha and then underscore red so it is going to go into the red channel okay and this needs to have a dollar f4 because there's going to be 16 frames and I click accept here and save and that is the first one done now let's go back and do the next one so I'll put my display flag here and again I can say just click on the button here because I'm going to keep the same settings and here we go I've pulled up in play and here we go we've got 16 more frames and again save sequence and this time I'm going to call it mask and I'll, I'll put A at the end for alpha and that should all be fine and that is that one done okay and very quickly I've just written all of those out to disk now we need to go and pull them back in and we need to start comping them together so that's the final thing to try and create our texture atlas so I'm going to hit file here show down a file node set my visibility to it and in this case, I want to make sure I click hip here. I want to keep my file names short if I can. So I'll go into lightning pack and instead of getting the full path here, it just truncates it down to dollar hip. And that'll make it easier to deal with. Um, so that's the first one done. And let's just drag these out. So I've got four of them to bring in. And all I should need to do if I give myself a little bit more space here for a second is go and adjust that one so there's G and then grab the next guy and here we go we've got all of our five sequences loaded in now I can jump back to my first few frames here and because I've got the display flag on all of them it's actually showing them all at the same time and um, so yeah they all look like they've come in correctly so our task is to pack all of this different information and this is rich information we can do a lot with it in a shader so we want to pack all of this into the into channels so the red channel the green channel the blue channel and the alpha and then we can tile the whole lot so we will have a packed and tiled atlas is what we want to end up with i'm going to keep it fairly straightforward we're going to pack what we've got uh, into the various channels and then we're going to put it out as a tiled atlas so when we're looking at our images here this image here is going to be important this is the mask that I'm creating for my uh, alpha clipping animation it's quite worthwhile going through the various channels and just seeing the data that's in there so this image is the same across these three channels but if we look at the alpha here we can see that the alpha is completely white so that means I can use this particular image for my overall alpha and then I can use any of the other channels here to clip the alpha and we'll see that over on the unity side when we bring the texture in so this is quite an important image the other images that are here uh, including this one I think the red channel this has become slightly irrelevant and that is because I already have this data in the alpha here so this this image here and my red channel are almost exactly the same so I can leave that one out for now just to simplify the graph and that means that I've got this image here which is my mask and I've got my emission I've got a second emission if you want here so I could go off and do lots of things with these I could blur them and add noise to them etc to put the channels together we need the channel copy node and this node is going to allow us to copy uh, to copy channels around uh, this is going to be my main image so this is going to go into input one and I want to copy in this guy here uh, I want to copy it into the green channel and we can see again if we look the image is the same on all of the channels so it doesn't really make a difference whether I copy the red one the green one or the blue one so I'm going to plug this into input two here and I'm going to show the channel copy so I need to tell it the target and the target in this case is going to be the green channel uh, I need to tell it what channel I want to bring in so it's going to be from input 2 and I'm going to just take um, CR here from input 2 so the red channel from input 2 
So this guy is input two here. Uh, so that's the first one done. I'm then going to copy this channel. So I'm just going to drag it out here, uh, holding the Alt key to duplicate the node. I'm going to plug this guy into input one, and I'm going to plug in my blue glowy guy here into input two. Now again, I'll just take a look at the various different channels here. This one's slightly different on each channel. I'm going to go for the one with the most contrast, and it happens to be the red channel here. Again, let's bring up our channel copy. So the source that I'm bringing in is going to be input two, and it's going to be the red channel. That's fine. And I don't want to put it into the green. I'm going to put it into the blue. Let's go and take a look now. This is our all of our channels copied in. So that's um, this image can look a little bit strange. We're not really creating a picture here. We're more interested in the actual individual channels. So this is the red channel. That's my animation clipping mask. This is the green channel. That's my emission. This is my backup emission and there's my clean alpha. So that's all of the parts I need for now. And I can come back later and I can start manipulating these within COPS. So the channels have been packed. So let's go and tile them now. And I'm gonna need the mosaic node to do that. And again, I'm gonna ensure I'm on the first frame here and I'm gonna hook it up. It takes a second to go and cook and I'm gonna take a look at all of our channels together and I get this uh, brightly colored image. Let's look at our red channel. There is our mask and that is coming through for all of our different tiles. So that's good. And here is our first emission. And again, that's coming through for all of the tiles. And this is sort of our stronger emission. And our overall alpha is good as well. Okay, so that all looks good and it's all tiled out quite nicely for me. For the Atlas, I'm only gonna render out one frame. So I'm gonna change this to render just the current frame. And I need to tell Houdini where I want to save my Atlas to. So I'm going to just put it into Lightning Packed here. And I'm just going to call it Lightning Packed Tiled. I uh, will do V2 and it's going to be a, be a PNG. So dot PNG and click Accept there. So that's the output destination where I'm going to save my Atlas to. Now there's one last thing I need to deal with and that is how the alpha is going to be handled. Um, so if you haven't done a lot of compositing, you're probably not going to understand the following uh, statement or two, but that's okay. You can just follow through and you'll be fine. Um, so currently what's going to happen if I output is that my alpha is going to be pre-multiplied. So it's going to multiply my RGB channel. And that is not what I want. I want four separate channels. So I need to output this so it is a straight image or unpre-multiplied. The way to do that is uh, under the metadata tab. Now I'll show you how I found this because this is a useful tip to know. I knew that there had to be an option to unpre-multiply it. I suspected that it was going to be on this tab here. It wasn't. So how did I find it on this node? I actually clicked the whole way through and I didn't manage to see it. So what I did was this. There is a search function for every node. So you can search here and it's quite a handy feature to know about. You could come in, for example, and you could say um, to show only the parameters with non-default values. And that would show any node where I have changed something on the node. So if you were just wondering what someone else had done on a node, this would be a quick way to find that out. Okay, it would shorten down all the values. In this case, I've only changed the output picture. Okay, so it's just showing me that. Okay, now I'm gonna show all parameters here and I'm just gonna search. And I knew there had to be something in it around pre-multiply. So I just typed pre -multi and there you go, it showed me that it's on the metadata tab here. So, okay, now that I know it's on the metadata tab, let's go over to the metadata tab here. And this is what I was looking for. PNG and TGA uh, pre-multiplication. And I want to change this from pre-multiplied to unpre-multiplied. And that will get me a separate alpha channel. Otherwise, my alpha will be multiplied by the other channels. A little gotcha there. So that's set up. I can now hit render and it will render out the disk. Okay, and now my atlas is rendered out to disk. Let's just bring it back in just to check. So I'll put down another file node here. And from my uh, render operator, I can just copy. And then I'm going to just paste it into here. So this should be now looking at my uh, file from disk. I'm going to put it back to show all the channels. So this is all the channels. And I'm just going to double check everything. So this is my lightning pack. If I hold shift, I can click the display flag on the mosaic. So I've got my lightning packed here on the left hand side and 
and the mosaic is over here so mosaic on this side lightning packed over here i need to do one last thing just to be uh doubly sure that i'm not pre-multiplying by my alpha well, on the file node here i need to change this from pre-multiply to leave unpre-multiplied if I hadn't done these two things, if I had something blurred on the blue channel and was outside the alpha, it would get cut off by this alpha, okay? But because it's unpremultiplied, the alpha is a separate channel uh, and the image is straight overall, so it won't multiply the other channels. So if you don't quite understand the theory of that, that's fine for now. Just be aware of the fact that you need to put out an unpremultiplied image. For Houdini Apprentice users who've been following along, you may run into uh, an error when you try to render, and that is because Houdini Apprentice has a render size restriction on it and i think at the moment it is 1024 by 720 so 720p um we're trying to render out at a resolution of 4k okay so 4096 by 4096 for you to get around that render resolution issue you could try doing the following you could change the override default resolution from natural resolution to specific resolution you may need to change this to 1024 by 720. Now, that means that you're going to have less pixels overall. So potentially you may need to go back to your mosaic node here. You could potentially change it down to something like uh, three images per line, and you could change the max images to nine. So th that will lower the amount of frames that you're going to have on your mosaic. So now you're going to have nine different lightning strikes here that you need to try and fit into this resolution. Now that will get you nine frames, which is nine different lightning strikes. Uh, potentially it's going to be a little bit stretched in the width if you do it that way. So most likely you might need to change this down. And I suppose the answer to this is probably the following. So our limitation will be an overall pixel limitation, I'm guessing. You guys will need to test this out, which would be now that will get us this amount of pixels overall. Uh, so if we were to change this to the scientific calculator here, if we get the square root of that. So it will be uh, so you could try 858 by 858 and see if that keeps you under the render restriction resolution. And that will be the maximum size image you potentially can get. So you guys will need to test that out. I don't have access to Apprentice uh, and you can let me know in the comments how you get on with that. So if you've not gone through this process before, the key takeaways here are that atlases allow us to tile a lot of information. So that's one key takeaway. And the second key takeaway is that we can pack lots of juicy texture information into our different channels. Uh, the next step for us is going to be to go back over to Unity and create a custom shader over there that can make use of all that juicy texture data. So I thank you for your time and I will see you in the next video.